What's up, what's up, Crypto Nation? Welcome to Bite Size Bitcoin and B90X Day 18 Bitcoin 90 Day Challenge. Yesterday, we did an introduction in technical analysis just around candles and all the different facets of candles. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into can candles in regards to candle shadows or candle wicks. Let's do this. B90X. Bring it. Yeah. All right, so we are in Bitcoin 90 day challenge day 18. Yesterday we talked about candles and a couple of the facets around candles. Let's look today at candle wicks or candle shadows, as I like to call them, or as they're generally called in the more traditional markets. Most people in cryptocurrency today call them wicks. So let's take a look at these. Shadows are these short bars. You see these short bars? The short bars above the body and below the body. You can have short and long shadows or wicks. And the upper shadow represents the session high. In this example, as we were doing in the previous examples, we're in the 30 minute session length. And so what the upper shadow represents, what you see here, is the session high, the highest price that someone is willing to buy or sell at and the lower shadow represents the session low so right down here if you have a candle if you have a candle with short shadow lengths short shadow lengths it shows that most of the training was confined near the open and close and so we're pointing to this example here the open was down here and the close was up here making this a green candle however the shadows are very short in length very short in length which means the trading was confined close to the open and close area long shadows the price is extended well past the open and close and so we had the open right here and we had the close right here and we had longer shadows a longer shadow up and a longer shadow down okay essentially what you have is you have a candle and you have a shadow above or a shadow below. And that length tells you how much price action happened during that session, in our example, a 30 minute session. So let's talk a little bit more about the length of those candles and what that means. The first example is right here, where we have a long upper shadow and a short lower shadow. A long upper shadow with a short lower shadow, as evidenced right here, a long upper shadow, and a short lower shadow right down here what this indicates is that buyers dominated the session in the beginning so lots of people were wanting to buy up and those bid prices moved the price upwards and so you have the longer shadow above the bar however sellers later forced prices down from their highs and a weak close uh, a weak close created a long upper shadow we had more sellers come in that wanted to sell off and make some profits. So it dropped the price down here. And what we have right here is a red candle, which means there was more seller pressure. Okay. An example of this, let's go over here. An example of this is this candle right here. We have a long green candle. We have a higher, higher upper wick or upper shadow and a lower wick or a lower, a shorter lower shadow here. What does this mean? This means buyers dominated this particular session. However, sellers forced the prices down just a little bit, but, but we had a long candlestick. This green is a long candlestick, meaning there was lots of price action. There was lots of price action within this session. And since the close, is greater than the open so the open is down here the open is down here and the close is up here since the close is greater than the open there is still lots of interest in buying or what we could call there's lots of buying pressure okay so there's lots of buying pressure with this one now what we can generally what we can generally take from this and now this doesn't always work but we can generally take from this particular example since the close since the close is greater than the open and buyers dominated this session 
an assumption that you can make, and it doesn't work every time, but an assumption you can make is in the next session, you will continue to see an upward trend. Now, in the next session here, we saw that it that the open was here. It closed lower, but it had a longer lower wick. It had a longer lower wick right here and a shorter wick here. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. Let's go over here. So with a long lower shadow and a short upper shadow, as evidenced here, right? We have a long lower shadow with a shorter, a shorter upper shadow. The sellers dominated this session and drove prices lower. However, however, buyers later resurfaced to bid prices higher at the end of the session, and you ended up with a strong close, which created a long lower shadow. Okay, so the open was here, the open was here, and the close was here. So let's look at this. Let's look at another example of this. Let's go right over here. We are looking at this one right here. Okay, this one right here. So we have a we have an open, open that started up here, and it closed lower than the open. But we also have a long lower candlestick here. So what does this mean? This means that sellers dominated this particular session. Buyers forced prices up and created a long lower shadow, right? A long lower shadow right here. However, because we have a short candlestick, a short candlestick right there, there was not a lot of price action, which we, there was there was price action within the within the shadows. However, it consolidated towards the end. And since the close is less than the open, there's still a lot of selling pressure. Now, what could this be indicative of? What this could be indicative of is in the next session, there's probably going to be more sell offs. So let's put this together. OK, so. In this particular example, we have an open up here. It ended up closing lower than the open price, and we have a long lower shadow, which means that there was not a lot of there's a lot of price action, but it eventually tapered out to something relatively close to the opening close. But the close, the close ended up being lower than the open, which means there's still more selling pressure. So the assumption could be that in the next session, you're going to see more sell offs. Let's see what happened. Well, what we see what happened right here is we continue to see more sell offs and some more consolidation. OK, this is what shadows or wicks represent. Shadows and wicks are a very powerful addition to just the candle itself. What shadows can tell you is the potential momentum of the price action that's going to happen in the next session, which could give you an opportunity to buy or sell. So if some rise it up right here in the blue box, there's a lot of stuff to add together. So if you haven't watched the previous video, you should probably watch the previous video on introduction to candlesticks. So we're going to put it all together. We have to consider the open and closing price, the size of the bar, plus the shadows up and down, plus the length of the shadows. What this will tell us is opportunities to buy and sell depending on continued movement or continued momentum. And so having these in your back pocket, understanding these basics of candles from the candle size and the candle thickness to the length of the shadows and putting that all together can give you very interesting insights as to where the market's going to move in the next session. Now, this can for many people be too much overkill of the minutia of stock prices. However, the more practice that you have in this, the more fluent you are in reading candles, it becomes intrinsic to your very mental models and it becomes easier to see price action and where it's going to potentially go. This is a very simple exercise. The more that you are into this, the more that you are reading candles, you are understanding the open prices, the closed prices, the length of the candlesticks, as well as the thresholds or length 
of the uh, Wix as well. If you put all this stuff together, it becomes part of your decision-making process as you begin to invest more heavily in Bitcoin and other altcoins. And so understanding the basics here are fundamental to your long-term sustainability as a cryptocurrency investor and creating the cryptocurrency lifestyle that you want. The exercise for today is pretty simple. Look at tradingview.com, bring up our big daddy Bitcoin and start looking at the candles. Start looking at the price action. How thick are those candles? How long are those wicks or those shadows? And, and run your own little experiments. Look at one particular area. Let's say pick something like, pick something like this one. Start right there. And you'll say, well, according to the open price and it closed above, where is it going to go next considering the length of the candle wicks or the shadows? And it will give you more experience of, of playing around with these now that you have all the data at your disposal. Continue to run these experiments. Jump into it. Get into it. The more that you are steeped, the more that you are seeped into this stuff, the better you'll do overall. So that's today's assignment. It's to get into the charts, look at the candle candlesticks as well as the candle wick or shadow lengths and make your own hypotheses. Experiment with it. I hope this tutorial on candlestick shadow lengths was helpful to you guys. If you like the content, please subscribe. And if you'd love us to make more tutorials and more walkthroughs, please consider subscribing to our patron as well, which you can find in the link below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.